What's up you guys, FSC Trucking. We're getting ready to go take Orwell, my 1984 Peterbilt 362 cab over. We're gonna take it down to Nina, pick up a striker. I got Matt holding a handy cam over here, right behind the camera, you can't see him, but he's there. I got the two GoPros on it back, so we're getting ready to get on down the line. Shut my door properly. Ah. There we go. Alrighty. Everybody even bitching and complaining. When are you going to fix your door seal? When are you going to fix your door seal? Well, now I fixed the door seal. Now I have to slam the door to get it to close right because the seal is so puffy. I have to readjust that striker, the door striker. <laughs> ah, funny how that works. Where the hell are the cops going? That's like the fourth one. Ah, something's going on up north. Oh well. With that, let's get on down the line. Get my apps straightened up here. Get Digi HUD put up. Ways put up. going to happen when we move to the new shop is have more room to maneuver. I miss the old shop, but having more room will be certainly beneficial. I'm trying to take her easy so he can blow some coal. Once we pull out on the road here. Orwell gives you one good blast of coal on a freshly started engine. And that's it. After you get the one shot, you're all done. Orwell only gives you one shot of rolling coal. And that's on a freshly started engine. It gives you one shot and one shot only. After that, it's just a little brown haze is all it'll give you. And it'll redo it every time you shut the engine off and turn it back on. I don't know why, but that's apparently what a bone stock B-model Caterpillar will do.
time, people probably like, eh, make up your mind. They ought to try being me and my family. Try to make up my mind. Land in Florida is very expensive right now. Everybody that I know that buys and sells property tells me I'm better off waiting for the market to cool off. Especially if the economic downturn is as bad as they say it might be. All at the same time, I don't like having to hedge my bets on bad news. I'd rather hedge them on good news. The other thing I gotta do is, well, put my mind into figuring out how to make more money. How to grow this channel to be bigger. How to make the trucking side of my life more lucrative than it already is. How to do bigger, better, better without sticking too much of my neck out on a chopping block.
What's up guys, Steve here. You guys like antique trucks, that's why you watch my channel. So why don't you go ahead and join me and see Orwell Saturday, August 6th between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. at Southern Michigan Railroad in Clinton, Michigan. No, 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 not Clinton Township, Clinton, Michigan. Go ahead and check that out. What they're doing over there at Southern Michigan Railroad is doing an event called Trains, Trucks, and More. What they're gonna do is they're gonna show off trucks similar to Orwell. They're also gonna show off other things such as farm tractors, emergency equipment, and much, much more. Now bear in mind, Southern Michigan Railroad, they do have historic trains and equipment. Southern Michigan Railroad is a pasture excursion line that runs between Clinton, Michigan and Tecumseh, Michigan. They do a round trip back and forth, that's the train ride. Admission for the show is free, by the way, boys and girls. So come on, let's go. Grab the kids, let's go. Meet me, see your well, get a train ride. Let's ride. Oh my God, you're a goober. <laughs> All right, take two. All right, boys and girls, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back old school, meaning that Way back when Matt was small, him and his brother used to ride with me during the summers. And one thing that the boys would do is they would help me with detaching and reattaching the gooseneck to the RGNs. So we're gonna go back to the old school. This way I don't have to do the up and down, up and down, up and down. You can handle what I do down here and I'll do what I do up there. This way I can, well, basically skip leg day. Will do.
about how much to do it for Titan? Yes. What's the rule? Dole it snug, then half a turn loose. Excellent. All right, hook your chain up to it. Some guys prefer to go the other way. It's always like so it doesn't fall off. I don't see either way, you know? I would just flip it anyway. Most people do it that way. See, that's why I don't like that way. You see how it touches the yeah. thing if it's if it's dangling? That's why I don't like it. But either one is fine, as far as I'm concerned. It's only a 42,000 pound truck and we're using 60,000 pounds of chain. So I think we got our bases covered. All right, grab your binder and hook it to the second rung right there, or the third if you could reach it. One, two, three. Hook it to the trailer first. Now which way is the threads? You want us to tightening is pulling to you. The other way. The other way. gonna run out of binder aren't you yes all right here take the camera what I mean by that Matt is by the time this tightens up you're gonna be out of threads you want to loosen it up as much as you can basically before the threads come all the way out of the binder Maybe there a little bit more. At some point, it'll just see it's getting real wobbly. Yeah. You're at the end of the thread. You see all this super slack you got? Yep. We can take a few links out of that now. See now you're much tighter. Slack out of the way. Now you're much tighter, and you've got a lot of thread left. Plus, you want to make it so you're pulling the bar to you to tighten it. Yeah. Like so. Now, I know you've never done this side of it. You haven't ridden in the truck for quite a long time. But see, now you're pulling down the suspension on the truck, so you're going to suck up a lot of this. Okay. Remember, when it starts getting tight, don't wrap your hand around it or if something, a link twist, something breaks, you'll wind up punching the ground. With the binder in your hand, you break your fingers. You want to do it with an open palm, so if it breaks, you just hit your palm, and you'll break your fingers. Ask me how I know. I broke a thumb once, tightening a strap on a bale of hay, believe it or not. Big tall hail bays. It, bales of hay on a step deck. All right, let's grab one of the fronts now. See, now that's always a point of confusion. Front or back? It's the back of the trailer, but the front of the load. That could, that could confuse you a little bit. Why are you on the there? It's easier for me. Is it? I'm smaller, so I don't have to lay down. I can fit under here. Maybe as well grab the other one while you're there. Oh, 
help if I was tightening. You were. This wasn't lined up. Uh, it's, you're right. Try not to rub on nothing. I know that thing's greased up with all that uh, anti-rust. I'm smaller than you, so I'm able to sink under there easy. All right, grab your hook. Same, same method, but the back ones we're gonna cross. Yep. And bring over here. Now I'm gonna have you do it the wrong way, and this is something I don't like about this trailer. I'm gonna have you do it the wrong way so you see why. Take that D-ring and flip it up. All right, lift that D-ring, Matt. All right, so if, look at where you're pulling it with your thumb. If you're pulling it this way and it's prying right here like a fulcrum, pulling this forward is pulling the bottom out. So you don't wanna grab it up high and that's what happens if you wrap the chain around it directly. So what I do is I take the hook, wrap it through, lift it up, wrap it through here take the chain and then hook it to the body of the trailer that way the hook is low at the fulcrum not up high so it won't rip the d-ring out it's just a dumb design what a lot of guys do is they'll cut them off and they'll weld new ones right here on the top of the frame and that works until you have to put a piece of freight here and then it won't fit because the d-ring's too tall that's why I don't modify it. That's already stretched pretty far. See it? Make it in. Yep, that's the right way. Look at the thread that we pull in this way is tightening. Hook it as close. Pull that. Nope, the other way. The what other way. Mean? Pull it that way. You want the you want the you want the binder to be close to the end as you can, right? Okay. So bring it to the end and hook it. Grab it right there. And hook the other end as tight as you can make it. Should be able to get that one. Work closer. Move that right hand up. Move the right hand up. There you go. Now you have more. There you go. Crank them down. Now these back ones like to roll links. You see how it goes around the clip, the, the pin right here? Not the pin, it's the clevis? Rolls. Yeah. So be mindful if it rolls a link, you might want to smack yourself in the chest or hurt in your hand. So open palm. I might run out of links here. That's called threads. That's threads. You might have to take it apart and redo it, we'll see. I didn't realize it was uneven. This one's not very tall, so you probably don't have to really kill it. Okay. Good anymore. Yeah, hook the other one up. Go get that, go get that rubber that's on the ground out there. You can go over or under, either one. Yeah, boy. Does it matter? The hook it there, right? Yeah, it's perfect. See, look, if this metal's kind of thin, it's not really thick, but you're not prying it up, you're pulling it in. So you're not gonna crush that metal, right? 
So you gotta realize what metal you're using for what. There are better ways to do this, it's just... This is the way this trailer's set up because it's a versatile trailer. See, if anything, this would be a good training video for a new driver. That side came out. Oh, I didn't know that. Get your rubber. That just keeps the chains from rubbing together and grinding themselves down, thus weakening them. Sometimes that link will roll on the rubber, just allow for it. In other words, put it up one way too far, and if it rolls, it'll roll to the center. If it doesn't roll, it's still plenty of rubber underneath it. And if the rubber disappears at the end of your voyage, it means your chains were too loose. good workout ain't it it don't do spit for cardio but it certainly keeps you strong I messed it up I got it too far that's plenty Remember, this truck isn't a tall one, so you don't have to worry about height. All right, back to the front, or back. To the back front, or front back. Yes, no. No, yes. This is the most awkward way I've ever seen a binder push. I'm not good with my left hand, that's fine. Use both. Should be good.
I guess they're sleeping. Shine the camera out. I guess you didn't have to. Thanks, lady. Let me hit the yellow. Don't plan to be. My nephew. That's that's the kid that should be a cameraman. Yeah. He has such a natural talent for that stuff. It's amazing to me. Got our cat scale. So here we are, 12,020 pounds on a steer axle, which isn't going to matter because you know we got about 200 pounds worth of cameraman in here. He'll be gone. We got three quarter tank of fuel. That 20 pounds will disappear. I've never seen anybody ridden up for 20 pounds. 34,920s the drives. Our permits are going to bump us up to 40,000 because you know it's a non-divisible load. I can't move the freight any farther backwards, and obviously I can't move the fifth wheel forward. There's not even the room nor is there room weight wise. So simply buy the permit, pay the money, it becomes legal, right? Just pay the money. And then uh, the trailer is 32,620, we're perfectly golden there. And we obviously can't move the truck any further back, it's up against the back deck. So dimension wise it fits, weight wise it doesn't, buy the permit, you're good to go. So it'll be 12, 40, and 40, perfectly legit and legal. to go. Got mad as water. He's literally holding out a gallon of cold water. Yummy, yummy. Oh, that water is tasty. It's not even that hot today, but we're working hard, so... Makes you warm. Alrighty, let's get on out of here. <laughs> 